Proverbs chapter 31 and verse number 1 this morning, please. Proverbs chapter number 31 and verse 1. Proverbs chapter number 31, verse 1. The infallible text says, The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him, What, my son, and what the son of my womb, and what the son of my vows? Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine to those that be of a heavy heart. Let, them, let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Open my mouth, open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Father, I pray that you bless your holy word now. Bless the messenger. Give me unction to bring the message. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. What you have here in chapter number 31, the book of Proverbs, is a charge by a mother to a king. And she's telling this king that you have authority over the people and you have responsibility to them. And she says in verse number 9, It is the cause of the king to plead the cause of the poor and needy. So I've said to you before, the greatest government on the face of this earth, without question, is a monarchy with a good king. And the worst government on the face of this earth is a monarchy with a bad king. So if you've got a good king, you're going to have a good country. And things are going to get done. But if you have a bad king, you're going to suffer under that bad king, and you're going to pay the price for it dearly. The Word of God in the book of uh, Proverbs chapter 31, this mother is advising her son, who is a king, and notice carefully, it's kind of an odd thing that she warns him about. A mother is warning her son, and she says to him in verse number 3, Give not thy strength unto women. It seems and appears to me this morning that this mother understood women better than a man would understood, understand a woman. Am I right, ladies? Do women know women better than men know women? Oh, yeah. You better believe they do. A woman will tell you in a heartbeat how another woman dresses. Oh, well, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, women have a sense about that. They have what's called an intuition. And they certainly are ca far more capable than a man. And so this mother is warning her son, do not give your strength unto women. And she gives him very good counsel in chapter number 31 of the book of Proverbs. Now the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel chapter 16 verse 44, Behold, everyone that useth Proverbs shall use this proverb against thee, saying, As is the mother, so is her daughter. My, my, my. They say that the apple does not fall very far from the tree. Can you inherit, therefore, certain characteristics from your mother, preacher? Oh, you better believe you can. You better believe you can, whether for good or for bad. We have good mothers and we have bad mothers. We have a lot of good mothers at Temple Baptist Church, and we've had some bad ones. About 30-something years ago, a family moved into our church that had something like four, five, or six children, and the mother wound up running off and leaving the husband with the children. I'll never forget that. She left the husband with the children. That happened more than once. I've seen that down through the years. I've also seen mothers in this church work one and two jobs, and sometimes three, if necessary, to feed her family, to take care of her children. And my friend, I have seen by my own eye that sometimes you have to say this is a great truth, that the love of a mother for her children is unsurpassed on this earth, saved by the love of Christ for us. The love of mother for their children is a pure love, is a giving love. It's the kind of love that we can rejoice and thank God for Amen. because God chose it to be that way. Amen. So the Bible says that as a mother, so is her daughter. 
For example, in the case of Jezebel, one of the wicked, most wicked people that ever walked the face of this earth. She was the daughter of Ethbaal. She was a Baal worshiper. And you know, she was married to a spineless man whose name was Ahab. Amen. She could twist him and turn him every possible way. And he, of course, was not the kind of person that Jezebel, when she was forward, outspoken, strong-willed, strong mind. when Jezebel set her mind to get something, she got it. And when you do a little reading in the scripture, you find out more than likely Jezebel was a beautiful woman, a very beautiful woman. And Ahab, the king of Israel, fell in love with a Canaanite, with a barbarian, if you're so to speak, because of her looks and maybe because of her strength, because Ahab got his strength from the woman, from Jezebel. But she had a daughter that most folks don't know about, and the daughter's name is Athaliah. And if you read your Bible and do a little study in the scripture, you'll find out that Athaliah was as wicked as her mother. The Bible says at one time that Athaliah rose up and killed all the seed royal that were in line to the house of Israel. And she did this, of course, to do away with any competition because she ascended to the throne and the, she eventually was taken down from the throne. And if you sow to the wind, you'll reap the whirlwind, my dear friend. If you live by the sword, you die by the sword. And she died exactly as she lived. So did her mother, who was tossed out from a window above to the ground below, and the dogs ate all that was left of Jezebel, save the top of her head and the palms of her, and of her, of her hands of the wickedness that she had done while she was here on this earth. There have been some mothers like Ma Barker, for example. You may never have heard of her, but she was back in the time of the 20s and the 30s when people like Babyface Nelson and Machine Gun Kelly and people like that were out notoriously robbing banks and killing people. Ma Barker took her kids and my dear friend, she supported them as some of the worst murderers and robbers that this country had ever known. Maul Barker started in Missouri, and she wound up in Florida, and she was shot to death in Florida. And then eventually, my friend, her, test, her, her notoriety has covered the whole land. How many's never heard of Maul Barker? Well, you've heard about her this morning. Do a Google search on her this afternoon, and there's a whole lot more about Maul Barker than what I gave you there. But oh, what, a, what, a, what an example she set for her kids. What they learned from their mother was the worst that they could possibly learn. There's a couple and one woman whose name was Sante. Her name was Sante Kimes. Her son's name was Kenny Kimes. This was a mother that corrupted and perverted her own son. She was probably the most notorious mother and son crime team of all time. These people would rob, they would murder, they would set buildings ablaze, they would lie, they would cheat, they would steal, they would do anything that they could possibly do, no limits to get what they wanted. And so she corrupted and perverted her own son. It's kind of like a Susan Smith, for example. How many's ever heard of her? No doubt she put her two boys in a car. She put these two boys in a car and rolled the car off into a lake. And they tell us that more than likely her oldest son could look back through the window and see his mother's face as they went down into the water. And Susan Smith did this so that she could get this rich guy she wanted there in town somewhere. She thought, if I get rid of my kids, then I will be able to be happy because I'll have the man of my dreams. How in the world she ever thought that she'd be able to live the rest of her life with the last thing she ever saw of her son was his little face looking at her as that thing rolled off into the water. But it shows you how deep that sin can take you. It shows you how dark the night can be once you've sold your soul to Satan. You see, my friend, Susan Smith was living for Susan Smith. It was all about her. It was all about her life. It was all about, about her. She was a narcissist. And they say that in prison today that she still is, that nothing has changed, that nobody's been able to reach her. They've carried the gospel to her. They've witnessed to her. They've tried to get her saved. And she's still the same person today that she was when she went behind bars. A murderer. My dear friend, I'm glad that I didn't have a mother like that. Aren't you? Aren't you glad that you didn't have a mother like that? Let me tell you something this morning. Every one of you in this house, I don't know what your position is on abortion. 
I hope that if you're a born again believer, you got the right position. That life is a precious thing. And that God has blessed with life. Well, don't you listen to something very carefully. Every last one of you are alive because your mother chose to bear you and bring you into this world. And she went through nine months of pregnancy. And then she went through the valley of the shadow of death to bring you into this world. And more than likely, if you had a good mother, she sacrificed and gave herself so that you could have something. And a lot of time, she didn't have it and never had it, but she wanted you to have it. That was the love of a mother. That's what Mother's Day is about. It's about people respecting and honoring the fact that they had a good mother. And they want to they they give some respect to that. They want people to know, I love my mother because she was good to me. And I want to do something about that. And so it is that we have good mothers and we have bad mothers. For example, in 1 Kings chapter 17, verse number 9, you have the widow of Zarephath. The apostle of the Bible tells us that the prophet went to her house and she was gathering sticks so that they could have a final meal and then die. You know the story in verse number 12 of 1 Kings 17. She said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise, and behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. That's all she could do. She was doing what she could do to take care of her son. Now, of course, the prophet had something far greater than what a stick could ever produce. The prophet could present her to one that was far greater than any of the gods that she'd ever heard about over there. But there was something about this mother that still loved her son, even though she lived in a pagan land. She showed him the mother's love. Matthew chapter number 15, verse 22. A woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent unto the lost, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Amen. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Second time he turned her down. But to cast it to dogs, she said, Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Yes. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. This is the tenaciousness of a mother. This is the stick to of a mother. This is a mother's love where the father may have long abandoned the mother. You understand that our country is in a crisis today because kids are being raised in fatherless homes. You understand what a price we're paying because the daddy has packed up and taken off and leave the children with the mother. The only parent that some of these kids have ever known is the love of a mother. Thank God they've got the mother. Thank God for that. Aren't you glad for that? Ted Bundy was one of the worst murderers this country had ever produced. He was a serial killer. He would kill indiscriminately. He loved killing. He lusted after taking human life. Ted Bundy's mother, for a long time, after he was, he was charged with some of these murders, refused to believe that her son could commit such crimes as they had said that he had done. She refused to believe that her son could do such a thing as that. If God has made you a wise mother, God will give you the intuition. He'll give you the spiritual discernment. He'll give you the sense to understand that regardless of how much you love your child, regardless of how much you give yourself to your child, they still need the Lord. Amen. And a mother's got to learn that. She's got to be able to discern that. I know of mothers in the past. I've heard, oh, my little child, they're so good. They're so sweet. They're so, they would never do anything like that. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Every one of us are born barbarians. Every one of us come into this world rebels and barbarians against God. I don't care who your mother or who your father was or what home that you came into. We all must be born again. Boy, what a difference it makes, though. 
as Lois and Eunice in the book of 1 Timothy. When the Bible says that from a child, Paul said, Timothy, from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures that are able to make thee wise unto salvation. They knew, this mother and this grandmother knew that the Greek father that Timothy was born to would never be able to, to lead him to the truth. They knew that he must be taught the truth of the word of God. It's important, ladies, who you marry. Let's say you marry off into some foreign religion. Let's say you marry off into some mainline Protestant denomination that denies the deity of Christ. It denies the blood atonement. It denies the virgin birth. It denies the new birth. They deny all of that and you married into that. Who's going to raise your children? Which one is going to win out when it comes to your children? You should know. You should know this without a shadow of a doubt. If you love your kids the way a mother should love her children, you should raise them in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. Amen. You should raise them from the word of the living God. Amen. You say, I'd be in rebellion against my husband. Rebel! You should have never married him in the first place. Amen! Amen. Amen. Your children are worth more than whatever so-called relationship you have. I've seen kids pay the price. I've seen women take choose their husband over their children. I've seen them choose their husband over their children in the salvation of their kids. I'm talking about a spiritual thing and an eternal thing. I'm talking about eternity. It is far more important that your children know the Lord Jesus Christ than it is that you keep whatever man you've got. And I'll tell you right now, men come and men go. So do when women come and women go. Marriages are made and marriages are broken. I'd like to think that of all the weddings that I've performed since I've been at Temple Baptist Church, the Lord only knows how many I forgot how many a long time ago. I've married people everywhere in the sun. I'd like to think, though, that of all these marriages that I've performed since I've been at Temple Baptist Church, all of them were still together today. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Yeah, but that's, that's la-la land. That's la-la land. That doesn't exist. Some of them didn't make it six months. I guess they got to know each other once they got married. <laughs> Amen. Yes, sir. They say you never know anybody until you work with them and you marry them. <laughs> well, you can't marry everybody. But some of you have found out that that man or that woman that you dated is not the one you married. Because anybody can live, a, anybody can put on a charade for a certain period of time, and then they change overnight. So what does a mother do? What do you do, ladies, if you're married to some man who wants to drag your kids off and you've got to fight with him week in and week out to get them to church? What do you do, preacher? You get them to church. Amen. You get them under the word of God. That's what you do with them. Amen. You bring them to the house of God and see to it that they hear God's word because the salvation of their soul is more important than anything else. Yeah. There was a time when marriages were sacred, but we're getting to a point now where nothing is sacred Amen. in this country. Ted Bundy had a dark childhood. He had no father, had no idea who his father was, had no idea. He was told at one time that his grandfather was his father. He thought his grandfather was his father. They messed with his mind. When he was a boy, he was sexually abused and lived in an abusive home. When he was young, he was introduced to the dark side of the world. When he was young, he began to delve into pornography. He began to reach off into that which belongs to Satan. You know, the Bible talks about they that have never known the depths of Satan. Well, by the time Bundy was a teenager, he knew all about the depths of Satan. And let me tell you what it made him. It made him into a serial killer. They say the night before Bundy was executed in Florida, he died in the prison at Stark, Florida. They say the night before Bundy was, the, the night before he was executed the next day, they say that he spent the night in prayer and weeping, that he wept and prayed. James Dobson visited with him right before he died. How many remember that? James Dobson visited with Bundy. And Bundy said, uh, he said, now, he said, Mr. Dobson, he said, let me tell you what happened to me. He said, when I got into pornography, it led me off into a dark world. And he said, I got to the point where I was desensitized. Nothing excited me anymore. Amen. 
Nothing excited me about pornography anymore. So I had to go out and do the next thing. And what is that? That's taking a human life. That's another form of pornography. I don't know if you know anything about history. Some of you do. How many of you have any idea what Jack the Ripper did over there in England when he would kill those prostitutes? Have you read about Jack the Ripper? Well, I'm not going to get into detail this morning, but this is just for you to think about what goes on. When Jack the Ripper would kill these prostitutes, he would violate them like you would not believe. And, and if you study anything about crime in this country and crime statistics and what goes on, you'll find out that the human body is subjected to unbelievable things when these murderers kill them. What have they done? They've left the pornography screen and they've gone into the actual reality of a deeper pornography. Say, so what can I do about it? You can be a mother. Amen. Amen. You can be a father. I have no idea in personally what a mother is like. No idea. So I've got to preach from the Word of God. And I've also got to tell you about one that I knew for 50 years. One of the sweetest mothers that this earth ever knew that would get up early in the morning and she'd catch a bus and she'd ride to Levi's and she'd work all day long so she could feed her kids. That's what that mother did. And she was as good a mother as you'll ever meet in this earth. Do you have a mother like that? If you've got a mother like that, the sun should not go down this day before you let her know you love her. If she's still in this world, if she's still breathing and walking, you should let her know I love you because look what you did for me. You were a good mother. Amen. You should do that. Amen. You should be so thankful. Some of you don't know what you, some of you have no idea what you, about what it is like not to have a mother. Some of you have no idea what it is not to, like, to be like what to, not to have a father. That is the foundation for the kids. That's how they grow up. That's the anchor that anchors their soul. Amen. Little children hang on to their parents. And it's natural for a child to love their parents. But some of you, your kids are an obstruction. They're a nuisance. You want to get away from them and get rid of them as soon as you can. Well, believe me, the day will come when they grow up fast enough. And they will leave the nest and they'll go out and you'll be left alone. And it won't be pretty. But when they come back and they come back and they come back and they say, Mama, I love you. Amen. Daddy, I love you. I remember what you did for me when I was a child. How good you were to me. The things you taught me. Amen. That is precious as gold indeed. Do you do that? Have you forgotten about your mom and your dad? Oh, it's so important. So very important to have that. I envy you. There's a part of me that looks at you that have good mothers and good fathers. And I say, Lord, I never had that. Have no idea what it feels like to grow up like that. Got no idea. And I told you last Wednesday night, I said, Lord, you're my father. Amen. You're my father. And I talk to him as my father day after day. He's my father. And I call him my father. I talk to him all the time, father. My father. I know you love me. I know you're going to chase me. I know you're going to direct me. I know you're going to guide me. I know you're going to watch over me. I know you're going to protect me. You're my father. You're never going to walk out the door. You're never going to leave me alone. You're always going to be my father. Nothing's going to change that. Amen. Amen. I remember a preacher saying one time, he said, I watched my daddy walk out the house. He said, my mom and my daddy got into some kind of a fight. And he said, I watched my daddy walk out of the house. He said, I watched my daddy as he walked down the road. He said, I looked through the window and he said, I started crying because my daddy was walking away. He said, I saw my daddy walk down the road. He said, he got to the top of the hill. He said, I thought for sure he'll turn around and at least look back where he left and his sons and his daughters in the house. He said, but he walked to the top of the hill. He said, my daddy just kept on walking. He never did look back. And he said, I turned to my mama and she gathered us all around her. And she gathered us like a hen does its little chickens. And said, children, I love you. I'm your mama and I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to walk away from you. I'm not going to forsake you. And he said, I love my mama like I ain't by nobody. Ain't nobody loves their mama like I love my mama. Amen. You ever had anything like that happen to you? Oh, yes. Yes, you say, well, preacher, I never have. Well, be considerate today because there are those who do. This Mother's Day is a day when you respect what other people have that you never had. That shows character on your part. It's instead of trying to tear them down and vilify them, thank God 
Somebody did have a good parent and a good home. Bundy never knew what a good mother was, and he had no father. Does that explain a lot how he turned out the way he did? I got this off the Internet the other day. These are some of the words of folks who love their mothers. I never want them to think that the whole world revolves around them, Mother says. But I want them to know without doubt that my whole world does. Did you get that? A mother's prayer is that her children will love each other long after she is gone. Let me love you a little more before you're not little anymore. Doesn't that have a beautiful ring to it? In raising my children, I have lost my mind but found my soul. It's pretty good. When my children remember their childhood, I want only for them to remember that their mother gave it her all. She worried too much. She failed at times, and she did not always get it right. But she tried her hardest to teach them about kindness, love, compassion, and honesty. Even if she had to learn it from her own mistakes, she loved them enough to keep going, even when things seemed hopeless, even when life knocked her down. I want them to remember me as the woman who always got back up. Until one becomes a mother, no one can ever tell you what it will feel like to love someone else so deeply and profoundly that you will rejoice when they rejoice, ache when they ache, feel what they feel, even without ever speaking a word. Boy, it doesn't take long on the Internet to find some folks who love their mother. Boy, did they love their mother. Now, we've talked about good mothers and bad mothers. Let's talk about the only mother that ever lived that was the mother of Christ. The Bible says that when she was standing by the cross of Christ, standing there looking at the one, she brought him into the world. She's watching him leave the world. Her heart's broken. The tears are rolling down her face. Her heart's beating out of her chest. How could they do this to my son? What has he done? What possible thing could he have done to the government and this religion for them to nail him on a cross like that and for him to die? No doubt a lot of thoughts went through her mind. She heard his heart beat. She felt his heart beat inside her. She felt him when he kicked in her womb. She felt his little life as she carried him for nine months. Then she gave birth to this little boy. And all the time going through her mind was the words of the angel Gabriel, that holy thing. That holy child is of the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says she pondered these things in her heart. The Greek word for ponder is symbolo. You know what that word means? It means to come into agreement with. What's that mean, preacher? It means that she was trying to bring her mind into agreement with God's mind and figure out what was happening to her. She couldn't, compare, she couldn't go down the street and say, how did you feel when the angel showed up and told you you were going to have a child? There wasn't anybody else on the face of the earth that could relate to what was happening to Mary. She was one of a kind. None like her before, none like her since. And here she stood. Here she stood. Her, her, her son, her son hanging on a tree. Did Mary love the Lord Jesus? Absolutely. Did she love him with a mother's love? Absolutely. Nothing was going to take her away from there. She was going to be with him in the last moments of his life. She was going to be there. Nothing was going to change that. Now listen to what I'm about to say because if you don't get anything else out of this message, please get this. I'm going to give you some stuff that's very important. The Lord Jesus Christ gave Mary the greatest gift he could possibly give her while he was on that cross. He said something to her that got her in her soul. It might have hurt when he first said it. But then afterward, she saw the fruit of righteousness of it. Say, so what is that, preacher? I'm going to read it to you. And I'm going to give to you what the Holy Ghost has given me. This is what it means to me. 
In the book of John, chapter 19, verse 26. When Jesus therefore saw his mother, he's looking down from the cross, and the disciples standing by whom he loved, this is John, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Now you can read a thousand commentaries, and you'll get mostly the same thing from all of them. But I was reading in this text yesterday, and believe it or not, here is a man from the 1800s, 150 years ago, that said the same thing about this that I've been saying. And I thought, thank you, Lord. I mean, I know what God gave me, but here's another man that said the same thing. You know what he said? Now, I've told you this before. Remember this. Mary, I love you as my mother. You love me as your son. But I am more than your son. I am far more than the relationship of mother and son. I am your Savior. And in order for you to understand that, I am breaking that relationship of mother and son. Take John now as your son. I'm your Lord God. Here this day, you're looking at me on this cross. I love you too much to not tell you what you need. You need to be born again, Mary. You need to be saved. That's what that text means. Most commentators disagree with me. But I'll tell you right now, God's got to show me something better before I back off of that. That's what's going on on the cross. He is telling his mother, I love you and I won't see you saved. And the bonds of mother and son have got to be broken. Here's your son. Take John now. And the Bible said John at that moment took her to his house. It was before he died. He spared her. Mary was not standing there. He spared her the last breath he drew. When he said, Father, it is finished, Mary didn't hear that. Mary had been taken away from the cross. He loved her to the end, still loves her. She's precious indeed to him. But the idea that Mary is an intercessor between you and God is garbage. There is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. And she needed to be born again just like you and just like me. That is the love of a son returned to the mother. Mary loved him, Jesus loved her, and he gave her the truth right before he left this world. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. We have exemplary mothers at Temple. I have watched you. And I've watched your children, and I've observed it. And like I say, I look at these kids and I think to myself, do you have a clue how blessed you are? <laughs> do you have any idea how blessed you are? Really? You have any idea how blessed you are to have the kind of mother you've got? My, 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 my. You don't have a clue. Some of you don't. Some of you do. Some of you know you've got a precious mother, and you're going to show her before this day is over with. But it won't just be this day. It'll be tomorrow, too, and the next day, and the next day. You'll show her how precious she is to you. Some don't. They take it for granted. They need to grow up like I grew up. Then they would understand and appreciate when somebody has a good mother. We've got some good mothers in here. May God bless you, ladies. May God bless you, mothers. And may God bless the preaching of his word. I wanted to lift up the mothers and exalt the Lord Jesus Christ before this day is over. I think I did. Amen. Father, in thy name we pray. In Jesus' sweet, holy, blessed name, for Jesus' sake. I want to thank you, Lord. What I know about mothers, I've learned from somebody else's mother. And I'm thankful for it. And I bless you for it. And I praise you for it. Now bless in the service. Maybe some mothers in this house today would like to say, Lord God, I want to be a better mother. I want to be a better mother. I want to be a better mother to my children. And I know the great responsibility you've given me. And I need your strength, Lord. I need your, I need your spirit. I need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I need wisdom and guidance. There may be a mother in this house today who would like to say that. 
You'd like to come and consecrate your life to the Lord? That's the word that I use all the time now, folks. Consecrate. It belongs to Him. Not rededicate. That's not high enough. Come to Him and consecrate it. And say, for to me to live is Christ. My life is your life, Lord. In thy name we pray. Amen. Let's sing, brother. Thanks,